Welcome back. Over the last four weeks, around three million viewers have been watching Channel 4's dramatization of the life of the British fascist politician Oswald Mosley. Returning from the First World War, he became the youngest member of Parliament. He defected from Tory to Labour, then formed the new party, and later, the British Union of Fascists. Nicknamed the Black Shirts, they struck fear into the Jewish communities of 1930s East London. But Malcolm Mitchell was one of several viewers who believed the writers, Lawrence Marx and Maurice Gran, were more concerned with Mosley's promiscuity than his controversial political activities. In the 1930s, the name Oswald Mosley, the fascist leader, struck terror into the hearts of the Jewish community in the East End. The makers of Channel 4's recent four-part drama about Mosley seem to portray his fascist activities as an incidental and small part of his life. Fascism wasn't even mentioned until the end of the third episode. Up until then, all we'd heard about was Mosley's political ambitions and his arrogance. But all of this played second fiddle to his womanising. The final episode did cover Mosley embracing fascism. We saw him meeting with Goebbels and with Hitler in Germany. We heard him raving about uh, Zionism and the Zionist conspiracy. But we also heard him denouncing anti-Semitism. And that purpose must be to eradicate the Jewish cancer from our body politic. Anti-Semitism is not our policy. We do not attack Jews because they are Jews. Only if they pursue an anti-British line. As the series drew to a close, we saw Mosley imprisoned in England at the outbreak of war because of his pro-Nazi views. When first introduced to his cellmate, there was no suggestion of any hostility towards black people. Finally, Mosley emerges from his cell to a hero's welcome from both warders and prisoners. And there, as far as the writers were concerned, Mosley's story ended. But why end it there? I'm not the only one who thought it was wrong that the series didn't give the full picture of Mosley. Maurice Beckman is a highly decorated Jewish ex-serviceman who lived in the East End of London in the 30s. This pub holds very poignant memories for Maurice, as it was outside here, straight after the war, that he witnessed a fascist meeting. The Mosley series did not impress me. The facts were right, but they had glossed over Mosley as a person and as to what he was, um, they'd whitewashed him. A habit of Mosley's black shirts was be um, before the war is they would pounce on um, passers-by, Jewish pedestrians, and throw them through shop plate glass windows. Bit of sport. I think the programme failed to show how dangerous Mosley really was by not uh, showing him after the war and his post-war activities and his ultimate downfall, a lot of viewers would have been left with the impression that he was nothing more than a lovable rogue. In the studio is viewer Malcolm Mitchell and executive producer of Mosley, Guy Slater. Guy, the basic charge, or one of them, is that the programme was too sympathetic. Mm. Can we look at two or three examples of where Mosley did come out very well? Mm -hmm. First, the case where, in Germany, he looks at the Jewish woman having to mop up the blood, presumably of, of the death of one of her family. Mm. Mosley is made to look aghast and appalled by that. Mm. What's the evidence? It didn't take place, did it? That's an invented scene. Uh, what, you, what the writers were trying to arrive at was some reason why he never carried it through. Uh, carried what through? Carried his fascism through. He, 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 he kept going, but he was never a revolutionary. He gave up from about 36 onwards, he was a busted flush. That's one reason why we felt that the 50s period, although very important in many respects and a very uh, despicable period, an obscene period, uh, wasn't as significant as the period up to, say, 36. But the impression of an ordinary viewer is that um, Mosley is seen through, Hitler is seen through the anti-Semitism, he's appalled by it. But it's invented. It didn't happen. That didn't happen, but it's perfectly true that he, it's perfectly true that he failed from then on. I think what we're trying to say was that the man, he wasn't uh, a revolutionary in the way that Hitler was. Can we look at another incident? Uh, the, the incident you drew, drew attention to, Malcolm, uh, where Mosley is in the cell with the black man. From what we know of Mosley subsequently, um, he didn't like black people any more than he liked Jewish people. And I felt that it gave the wrong impression. It gave the impression that he was... Um, somehow trying to, um, I, I don't know, uh, 
they, they were trying to give the impression that he, he wasn't really a nasty kind of person, that he was only uh, in, in this position by circumstance, and that, that really, um, if he was given half a chance, he, he, would, um, he, he was really quite a nice bloke. Guy, is there any evidence for what was said in that scene, mostly being very friendly towards the black man, offering to intercede with him in the cabinet? Uh, What's the he, evidence? He was a, uh, it gets an invented scene, although he was put into a cell with a black man, that we do, a musician, that we do know. But we but don't know what they said to no, each other. No, we don't know, but what we do know about Mosley uh, is that uh, what was terrifying about him was that questions of like and dislike barely came into his life. Skidelsky makes that, at that point, so does his son Nicholas Mosley, so does most of the documentation that I read about him. He, he came up with rational, what he believed was rational scientific solutions which paid no heed whatsoever to the complexity of human relationships. He would simply say, let's move this block of people from here to there, there we've solved it. But there's a danger you so made him likeable though. I don't think there's anything likeable about him in the series from start to finish. Malcolm, can I bring in your concern here yes. that, uh, you, uh, that, the, that the series ended too early? Sure. Why was it so important to you that the series should have gone on? What would you want it to have shown? Um, well, I mean, the, the very scene that you were talking about earlier where he's supposed to have almost seen the, the, the light on the road to Damascus and changed his views about Jewish people, uh, you say it didn't happen. Obviously it didn't happen because immediately after the war he set up, he, he tried to um, set up again. He had uh, fascist meetings, supporters of his were still out in the East End looking for Jewish people. He was a Holocaust denier. Um, he what, what, uh, that he, he, he said after the war he said that after people the war. hadn't died in the concentration camp? He said after the war that the crematoria um, was just there purely for people who died of natural causes and that the gas chambers never happened. And you also wanted to go on and include the 1959 election when Absolutely. Mosley stood for Parliament. Yes. Why was that so important? Well, because um, in 1958 you had the Notting Hill race riots mm. um, and Mosley's party had exploited those and really largely stirred them up. Um, mm. They'd paid young people, teddy boys and things, to go and, and cause trouble. And um, then he stood at Paddington and which encompassed the Notting Hill constituency, and lost his deposit, which so was one of the few times... he went on the racist ticket? He went on the racist ticket, he lost his deposit, which proved that people were yeah. turning against him, but it wasn't really showing his complete downfall. Well, can I do the first thing first, before we, why we didn't go into the 50s period? Uh, when I say he wasn't an anti-Semite, I don't think he was just as much of an anti-Semite as anybody else of his generation and class. What I was trying to say was that what he... And it doesn't actually make him any the better a person. He unleashed a wave of terror which was utterly repulsive. And, and totally unforgivable. What he did, his actions, nobody wants to duck so that. So why didn't you didn't cover do. his the actions period. after the war? Well, because he was a busted flush. Two, two reasons. Either you, either you make a film about uh, the Cable Street, which is the, the, the iconic image that we all have of Mosley, and we all flatter our own senses of outrage, and we come away saying what a nasty man he was, and how good we are to have made this film. Or you do the rather more dangerous thing, I think, and the more uncomfortable thing, which is to work out trying why he became the man that he was. Now, if you've got four hours, the privilege of four hours on television, you really can't go from 1919 to 1959. It's a simple But you set. did. I think one of your concerns, again, Malcolm, was they did find time for a massive amount of philandry. Now, you, yes. you don't deny that um, he was a philanderer. Oh, absolutely not. No, I mean, he, he obviously was. And, um, I mean, no, nobody denies that. But it just felt to me that you were kind of looking more for sensationalist ratings, if you like, by showing his philandering. There was a lot of sex. Couldn't you have uh, spared us just a little and concentrate well, on some of this darker side, if well, you like? We, we could have done too. Well, I think the, the, the sex is presented very darkly. I don't think there's a woman who watched that programme who wouldn't have been repulsed by the man. I really, all the women I have spoken to were so angered by, who, by what he was and how he treated women. And I believe that the way in which he manipulated women and the kind of attitude he had towards them mirrored exactly what his view of politics was. He manipulated people through language. He thought that by a, a nice phrase, he could somehow solve a problem. He could seduce a woman. And I think it was relevant that we could, you know, you could always argue that the balance could have been pulled back at some point. But, but I would finally say drama is about person, personal life, not political. But in the end, Malcolm, you believe, I think, you told me that, that anybody watching that, not knowing anything about the history, would probably think he was rather a glamorous, heroic figure. Is it, that, that's right. I, I think they would have felt that perhaps he wasn't, um, you know, what's all the fuss about would have been the, the attitude that here's this guy, slight bit of a playboy, a bit of a sort of, um, you know, a, an anti-hero perhaps. He didn't come across as, as the evil person that he was. Do you accept that guy? In the end, if you're going back again, 
Would you paint him with, mostly with slightly darker colours? No, I, I think that the trouble is that he's become an icon of evil who carries the weight of the Holocaust behind him. Six million dead live in our assessment of Mosley, which of course, I'm not trying to justify Mosley for a moment, he had nothing to do with. But there is a, an enormous emotive feeling about Mosley which is attached to the Holocaust, which I share. And when I first came to this project, I shared exactly those feelings. But I am far more interested, I think it's far more important, if we're ever to recognise another Mosley, that we identify that it derives or can derive from idealism of a certain kind. He doesn't leap from his mother's womb already a sulfur breathing demon. Guy Slater, Malcolm, thank you very much indeed. Then I'm afraid we must leave it. Please do let us know your views about what you see on TV. Our address and numbers are on your screen now. Keep our number handy. You never know when it could be your right to reply. Until next week, goodbye. Right to Reply is now on the Channel 4 website, or you can call us on 0171. 306 8582. Our address is 124 Horseferry Road, London SW1P 2TX. Youthful ambition. I want to get to the top. The desire to be the best. I want it badly. But is the ambition the child's? Concentrate. Or the parents? Don't want the acting, don't want the tears. Who cares how she feels? Ambition. Tuesday's cutting edge at 9 on 4.